Hi, here's how I made a moth trap for my garden using mostly spare parts that we've just had lying around. This trap has an average of 8 moths a night, with the highest being 17, but this will completely depend on the area that you are in as well. The most important part is the light to attract the moths. I made use of an old lamp that I had and built a wooden frame that I could hang it from. I definitely recommend looking into what bulbs you can get. There is a huge range from beginner to advanced. The bulb that I had already wasn't good enough, so I ended up buying a 20 watt blacklight, which is about as beginner as it gets, but only costs about 15 pounds. I'd then recommend before you build the trap itself, setting up just a bed sheet with the light and seeing if there are any moths about, if the bulb itself is powerful enough to attract them, um, and just kind of get an idea of what's around. This is also a good chance to see if you'll need an extension cable, um, and then later on for the trap itself, I, I would recommend getting a timer as well. This is just so you're not bothering the moths all night and they get a little chance to rest away from the bright light. Next up is the container. I used a spare storage crate that I found, but you can also use things like a big plant pot or even a bucket. Uh, it's also helpful if one of these comes with a lid that you can then cut into. Uh, I ended up using foam board just because I couldn't find the lid for the container. Now onto the funnel and reflector. I really struggled to find any funnels somehow, so I ended up finding what's called a bell cloche at a garden center that I spun around, cut a hole in the bottom, and it seemed to work fine. Next is the reflector, which I made out of the spare foam board that I had. And I definitely recommend building a cardboard template that you can mess around with and test, and then transfer that to whatever material you'd like to use. This just acts as a way to bounce the light off further, and it's something the moths can then land on and then fall down into the funnel and into the moth trap itself. And then you're pretty much ready to go. Uh, just fill up the box with as many egg cartons as you can gather, which is a place the moths can just hide once they're in the trap and get comfortable, ready for you to find them in the morning. And remember to set a timer as well, just so it's not on all night. And just a little bit more info, try only moth trap a few nights a week, as this will give the moths some time off where they're not stuck in a trap and they can do what they would normally be doing. You can time this around when it's going to rain, for example, as this trap in particular isn't really waterproof, particularly if you're using foam board, um, and be aware of the bulb itself and whether that's going to get water on it as well. You can put a little protector above it, uh, and you can put holes in the bottom of the moth trap to avoid it filling up with water as well. Now just a little example of how I empty the moth trap in the morning. Uh, make sure you check all the way around the trap uh, on any surfaces, because moths can and will get anywhere, uh, and you don't want to miss any. And then once you're to the trap itself, check your egg cartons thoroughly. Moths like to hide in the crevices, um, and when this happens and you're struggling to ID them, you can just tap them out into another egg carton, um, and get your ID from that, which is a lot easier. If you're new to moths and you're struggling to ID certain species, I definitely recommend getting an app for it. I use iNaturalist, but there's also one called OBS Identify, and this is really helpful when you're starting out and will give you a rough idea of what things are. Uh, books on moths will also help if you have one of those as well. Also make sure you check the inside walls of your container, as yeah, they can end up anywhere, um, and even on the underside of the lid as well, or the funnel. If you're struggling to get them out, I'd recommend just using an egg carton and just like very gently pushing the moths onto them, um, and then yeah, much easier to get photos of, or generally ID them. Then when you're done with identifying them, you can just tap them out into a nearby bush. Try and make sure you switch this up every so often uh, as birds can learn where you put them um, and it's an easy feast for them. And then it's putting the trap back together, filling it back up with egg cartons and then it's ready to go for whenever you trap next. I'll generally log what moths I've caught that morning on my phone 
and then after a few times of trapping I'll put that onto a spreadsheet that I made that I'll link a copy of in the description if you'd like something similar and then this spreadsheet I'm hoping I will then go on to submit to the county recorder at the end of the year. It also makes for a great way to calculate averages and see your total moth species count. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. I hope that there is something that you've gained from this video and you can take away and use for yourself. And if you have any questions, bearing in mind I am still just a beginner, do leave them in the comments and I will do my best to try and answer them. Have a great day. Bye.